तो गुड आफ्टरनून फ्रेंड्स सर मैं पहले इंट्रोडक्शन करता फिर उसके बाद आप कंटिन्यू से शुरू मैं इंट्रोड्यूस माय सेल्फ आई एम जेम्स जोस मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर ऑफ सीजीआर मेटलोइस प्राइवेट लिमिटेड ए बीएस अप्रूव्ड गोल्ड ऑफ एंड बीएस लाइसेंस गोल्ड ऑफ एंड री ऑपरेशन फॉर द पास्ट थर्टी इयर्स आई आल्सो हैपेन टू बी अ मेंबर ऑफ द इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड्स कमिटी ऑन टेक प्रेशियस मेटल्स एमडीडी टेन सेक्शनल कमिटी एट बीएस आई आल्सो हैपेन टू बी द पास्ट सेक्रेटरी ऑफ एसोसिएशन ऑफ गोल्ड रिफाइंड डिजाइनर्स सो दैट इज टू से हैव बीन एसोसिएटेड विद द बुल्डिंग इंडस्ट्री फॉर द पास्ट 30 इयर्स इन वेरियस कैपेसिटीज सो गुड आफ्टरनून फ्रेंड्स टू द सेशन ऑफ मैंडेटरी हॉलमार्क ऑफ बुल्डिंग the session is having importance in the context of the government proposing to introduce mandatory hold marking of bullion maybe in the coming months as you know jewelry hold marking was started some uh, 23 years back and after the mandatory hold marking of jewelry in 2021 the government has added a new heritage 23 ks sorry 24 ks 995 bullion so as of now 995 bullion in artifacts form is permitted to be hallmarked at bas licensed for market centers that's about the first category of bullion that is getting circulated in the market the second category of bullion that is getting circulated in the market is hallmarked bullion bars supplied by bas licensed gold refiners and the third type of bullion that's now available in the market is in good delivery bars coming from abroad imported from abroad from lbm accredited refineries they are they are in conformity with the specifications of lbm good delivery bars so we have different types of bullion available in the market 995 bullion 999 bullion and 49 bullion also so to bring in some st- some type of a standardization into the bullion business and bullion availability and to ensure quality certified product to the jewelry industry and the manufacturers and the categories the government has proposed mandatory hallmarking of bullion the proposal was there for the past one or two years presently the government has constituted a, an advisory committee in the consumer affairs ministry they had several rounds of meetings and the sop and other guidelines are in the final stages of preparation that is what we understand so bro, we don't know the final picture what that's going to come out but the broadly the picture is like this the first is the first phase of mandatory hold marking shall be introduced shall be implemented for bas licensed gold refineries and in the second phase the time frame is not uh, stipulated in the second phase all other bullion available in the country may come under the purview of mandatory hold marking of bullion and also that we have the third category of imported bullion which is already uh, certified as per lbm standards so now going into the specific details i would like to say uh, let us start with the bas licensed gold refineries so the licensing scheme for bas licensed refineries was started in 2015 as of now there are 50 bas licensed gold refineries all over india this licensing scheme is basically meant for assessing the technical competency and the production capabilities of gold refineries whether the, the bas license will be verifying whether these refineries uh, have the technical competency and capability to produce 995 and 999 bullion either by acquiring a method or by electrolytic method so that is the bas uh, scope of the license they are also checking whether the these refineries are complying to the pollution control norms stipulated by the central pollution control board to go a little detail the national green tribunal in 2016 has categorized industries into four types white green orange and red because these gold refineries are using nitric acid and maybe a little bit of other chemicals also because of the usage of and the quantity of acids the gold refineries are coming in the red category of uh, uh, pollution control board consent 
these red category licenses they have their own sighting criteria location a little bit away from the commercial area some minimum distance and all that we are not going into the details so bas license is broadly checking whether these gold refineries are having the consent from the pollution control board and the production capability of these refineries in terms of manufacturing 995 and 999 gold that's about it after this uh, in 2015 the bs license was introduced subsequently in 2019 another standard for uh, good delivery bars was also introduced that's called the india good delivery standard is 17278 2019 which is not enforced or which is not certified per se so the present proposal for a mandatory hallmark of building shall be in two aspects one is the refinery shall have bs license Number two, the refineries, those refineries interested may go for good delivery license also from the BAS. Uh, we'll go into the little details later. So now coming to the type of woodland available in the country, the proposal is to have uh, 100 gram and above bars in under the mandatory regime. That is to say, the India good delivery category is presently in 100 gram and one kilo categories. So the stakeholders have requested that mandatory hallmark shall be implemented for those bars in 100 grams and above weights. That is to say, the industry has requested that smaller bars below 100 grams may be exempted from the purview of mandatory hallmarking in the first phase. We are not sure how it is going to come out, but this is broadly the proposal. But the government has also, the government and the BAS has also mentioned that they are very keen on covering all the bullion available in the country. Still, we need to go for uh, smaller exemptions also. Because as you know, in jewelry hallmarking, below two gram articles are exempted from the purview of mandatory hallmarking. Similarly, for bullion hallmarking also, we may request a certain uh, cutoff uh, weight or uh, what you call permitted tolerances for or uh, what you call exempted category for bullion bars. But as of now, what we understand is that the government is proposing that all bars above 5 gram may be hallmarked, which may be a little difficult because, you know, as you know, there are only 50 BAS licensed gold refineries across the country. So if a manufacturer or an artisan in a small village, uh, he, they may not be having access to hallmarked bullion bars in 50 gram, 100 gram, 10, so 50 gram, 20 gram, etc. So, what we feel is that it is better to accept smaller bars from the purview of mandatory hallmarking, at least for the coming three, four years. Okay. Now, coming to hallmarking, we mentioned that there are three types of bullion available in the country. Uh, one is, uh, the first category is uh, at the moment permitted under 23 KS artifacts. That is to say, even now, bullion articles of 995 purity can be hallmarked at BS recognized hallmark centers with HUD hallmarking by laser marking under the 24 KS 995 category coming under artifacts. Okay. So going after that, after that, we uh, let us go to the triple nine bullion. Triple nine bullion is presently permitted to be hallmarked only by BS licensed gold refineries, that to by embossing. It is not laser marking. And there has to be five parameters for uh, this whole marking to be done by the BS licensed gold refineries. Uh, to be a little more, to go in a little more in detail, the jewelry whole marking is done by third party agencies. Like the jeweler or the manufacturer goes to a BS licensed gold refiner, gold whole marking center and get it whole marked using HUD whole marking with the laser marking. But bullion whole marking is different. It is done on, it is a product certification scheme done by self certification by the BS licensed refineries. These refineries shall have a, a world class laboratory attached to their refinery. That is one of the conditions. The second condition is that the refinery shall be in operation for one year. The third condition I have already mentioned is about uh, the pollution control consent. There is no capacity limitation like production capacity shall be minimum quantity turnover shall be minimum this much amount that is not part of the bas licensing scheme 
Of course, it may come later because all of us know that for LBMA refineries, there is a certain cutoff in terms of net worth, in terms of turnover, in terms of production capacity, etc. But as of now, the BAS licensing for gold refineries does not cover the financial aspects and the production capacities. Okay. So, uh, any, B, any refinery applying for BAS license shall have an NABL accredited Faracel laboratory as per 17025-2017 version. Uh, this refinery, uh, this refinery license, uh, this refinery laboratory is a little more different from the uh, assay laboratory of a hallmark center because the testing method for bullion is different. You need jewelry hallmarking. The government has permitted different levels of tolerances. One is about the negative tolerance for a jewelry article. For, for example, for 916 hallmarking, if BS take a market sample, the permitted tolerance is up to 914. So that's 0.2% is permitted as a negative tolerance for jewelry articles. Whereas for bullion hallmarking by BS licensed refineries, there is no negative tolerances permitted in purity. So all the bullion bars stamped in 9990 shall have minimum 9990 when tested in any other laboratory, any other similar laboratory. So to take care of that requirement, most of the bullion manufactured by BS licensed refineries is in 999.2. Some extra 0 0.02 is added. To take to protect the refineries from ne any negative tolerance in other laboratory. Another negative tolerance or a lack of tolerance permitted vis-a-vis -vis jewelry is a weight. Any product certified by a in terms of weight certified by a BAS license refinery shall not have any negative tolerance in weight. So if I am certifying 100 gram, it shall not be when the test, when weighed in another laboratory or another agency. It shall be minimum 100 grams. So always the refineries put some extra 10 milligram or 20 milligram into the bar. So normally a bar will be 100.010 gram to avoid negative tolerance in weight. So that is the difference between uh, jewelry hallmarking and uh, bullion hallmarking. Another difference is that the accuracy. For jewelry hallmarking, the the permitted tolerance in repeat testing is 0 0.05. That means in the morning I test it at 9166. In the evening, it can be 9161 or something like that. I mean, that is the permitted repeatability tolerance. Whereas for bullion bars, it is, I'm not going into the details, whereas for the bullion bars, it is 0 0.02. That's why we mention, we always say that a bar stamped at 9990 shall have minimum triple nine zero. So to take care of that, we are keeping it at triple nine point two. So that so for bullion it is only 0 0.02 permitted tolerance. For jewelry, it is a 0 0.05. That's the difference in purity in, in repeatability testing. No negative tolerance for purity. Four PPT permitted for jewelry, but for uh, bullion there is no negative tolerance. It shall be minimum. Weight also we have mentioned. So these are broadly the uh, technical uh, aspects which the BAS is checking when they come for a, a certification or licensing. Then coming to the product certification, I, we mentioned that uh, uh, Bullion Hallmark is a product certification done in-house by the BAS licensed refinery where the refinery shall be imposing the five parameters. One is the BAS logo. Number two is weight of the bar. Number three is purity of the bar. Number three is the, the refiner's logo or the name. And number five is the traceability number. There shall be a unique traceability number. As you know, for jewelry hallmarking, there is HUAD. For bullion hallmarking, HUAD is not, may, may not be implemented in the initial phases. Initially, the refineries will have their own serial number, where from the serial number, you can trace the origin on which day, on which date, on which year the bar is supplied by the refinery. So these are the five traceability details for uh, bullion bars. And the size of the lettering also is mentioned in the, as I, I, as I mentioned, there is an India good delivery standard, 
IS 17278 2019. This particular standard for India Good Delivery specifies the size of each bar. So the size of a one kilo bar is mentioned in the standard. There is some permitted tolerance to take care of a, what you call a graphite crucible mold, wear and wear and other details. So one kilo bar is mostly cast bar, and 100 gram bars can be cast or minted bars. There are also some permitted tolerances are there for uh, dimensions, length and breadth. Then coming to the size of the letterings, we have some permitted tolerance to take care of uh, minor variations. Uh, okay, that is about triple nine bars. Now let, now let us talk about uh, the traceability, of what you call the trace elements in bars. As of now, the refineries are certifying only the gold content to the bar. That's that is to say, we are certifying that this bar is containing triple nine gold. What is the remaining point one? We don't know. Nobody knows, or nobody is checking it, or it is not mandated to, to mention it. But of course, I'm not going to the four nine testing method. But just to broadly mention that presently, there is no four nine test method in Indian standard. So in India, the BAS is not certifying any laboratory for testing four nine testing. When it comes to 4.9, we need to be sure about the trace elements. What are the other elements contained in that? Okay, that's about 4.9 testing. Coming back to triple nine testing, when you go for the uh, India good delivery bar, this good delivery bar is meant for a delivery to the uh, banks and spot exchanges. Definitely, these institutions will be going a little beyond the purity and uh, the weight because they may re uh, require to have... Uh, to have a specifications about the trace elements, whether these bars are containing prohibited elements, deleterious elements, whether these bars are responsibly sold, whether these bars are manufactured in conformity with the green manufacturing practices. So all these parameters may be incorporated into the India Good Delivery Standard. I'm talking about the Good Delivery Standard. That is getting finalized. So the Good Delivery Standard is already in place, which is presently having only the technical parameters. So in future, because that is part of the draft of the suggestions going on with the BAS, that in addition to the purity and weight, the India Good Delivery Bar shall have uh, shall take care of other requirements so that the banks and the commodity exchanges are more comfortable with the, uh, with the origins, with the other parameters of the Good Delivery Bars. Like when, if you look at LPMA parameters, LPMA is going much beyond the weight and purity of the article. They are checking into a lot of other things. Uh, like uh, I'm not going into the details. They are going into this, uh, whether it is responsibly sourced, whether the child labor is involved, whether it is in conformity with uh, the uh, environmental norms, sourcing parameters, funding, uh, the particular origin of funds. So they, all other details, LPMA, system is checking into it. So of now in India, we don't have an LBMA type mechanism for uh, checking all these parameters. In future, it may come. It may get added into the India Good Delivery Bars because that is one of the demand raised by the commodity exchanges and banks for accepting Good Delivery Bars. Presently, the commodity exchanges are having their own certification or their own empaneling mechanism for accepting Good delivery bars. They are incorporating. They have incorporated all these parameters. So in future, it may get incorporated into the India good delivery standards also. So presently, I am repeating once again: the India good delivery or the BS licensing scheme is looking into the purity, weight, origin, traceability parameters, and environmental conditions. So I think we have covered uh, the technical side of the. BS licensing scheme and the good delivery standards. Uh, it's around 20 minutes we started. Now uh, we'll close this introduction thing uh, part and then we shall go to the question and answer part. Um, that is okay for everybody. We are comfortable with the Hindi and English. My Hindi may not be very fluent, but still we can understand Hindi. So the question and answer can be in any language. Thank you. Over up your comments.
Yeah. Sir, we play one video. After that, you, you can continue the session. Question answer session. Usool. Sunne mein ek dam sakth. Par socho to mazedar hai. बोलने में उसूल आसान सरल उसका उच्चार है पर समझ तभी पाएगा घर चलेगा कोई अकेला चार कदम उसूलों पे जो उसूलों पे चल सका उसके जीवन में दिशा है उसूलों में कठिनता है कई बार उसूलों पे चलने वाले को मिलती कई चुनौतियां हैं नामुमकिन तो नहीं पर काफी मुश्किल है उसूलों पे अकेले चलना सिर्फ उसूल भी अकेले कहा कुछ कर पाते हैं साथ तो उन्हें भी चाहिए उसूलों पे चलने वालों का उसूलों पे अगर सब साथ चलें तो उसूल उसूल नहीं उससे कई ज्यादा है साथ चलें तो उसूल परंपरा है संस्कृति है सामाजिक संपत्ति है जिस पे निर्भर हो सकती है आने वाली कई पीढ़ी कीमत भले उतनी ही चुकानी पड़े उसूलों की पर साथ चलें तो उसूल पूरा पैसा वसूल है साथ चलें जो उसूलों पे उनके जीवन में सफलता है उसूलों पे साथ चलना मेरा तुम्हारा हम सब का इसी में फायदा है स्वर्ण आदर्श अभियान एक औद्योगिक पहल those have a question please ask them and raise the hand so we unmute them if any one have a question please ask them हेलो या दुलीचंद जी जैन सर इट इज माय सेल्फ एंड योर सेल्फ इज कॉलेज इन एट वेरियस प्लेसेस माय सेल्फ इज आल्सो द बीएएस एमटीडी टेन मेंबर एंड आई हैव रेज्ड द प्योरिटी सब्जेक्ट ऑलवेज दैट व्हाट इज द बोनाफाइड डीड ऑफ नाइन नाइन फाइव आई वुड लाइक टू नो स्टिल द व्हाट व्हाट द रीज as ks or whatever it is being used 24 carat is not the purity it can never be stamped as 24 carat because 49 is also not 24 carat but it is admissible because 0.10001 percent is only tolerance so this subject should be studied and deliberated accordingly i am in train i am very sorry that there is a disturbances but uh, i am going to kolkata sir but i would like to know what is the bona fide date i am myself is the president of national president of bhartiya sankar sang and i am associated with a lot of say associations like national gems and jewelry council of india i am the board member there these question would like to be clarified gems sir i am asking and asking to the entire unit that what it should be how it should be resolved thank you sir Presently, the Indian standard is covering two types of bullion. One is nine nine five and triple nine bullion, because uh, there is a lot of uh, micro refineries operating all over India. Uh, they don't have the aquaregia method or the electrolytic method for refining. So, in the rural areas and in small workshops, it is mostly nine nine five. So, over a period of time, as and when mandatory hold marking is implemented all over the country. it make it phased out but for the time being it is a decision of the commerce ministry and the finance ministry as well as the bsc 
to continue with the 995 standard. Okay, Mr. James, uh, sir, we have a question in the chat box. Are you able to see that, sir? One second. So one side we are, the government of India is according to the Vienna Convention, we are proceeding for the ISO category. But uh, my question is still where it was, what is the bona fide need? And wh whatever you have said that there are a lot of, refiners. Lekin sir, ek baat batayye, purity ke saath mein, aaj smuggling bhi to 995 ki barrier mein is boost ho raha hai. 995 ke chalte bhoot bada iska, aapko sab ko maalum hai sir, 993 ka gold bhi kraha hai maazar mein, grey market mein. Ek dam openly bhi kraha hai, mein nahi janta hoon, kisi jaans ki tari bhi aur ki tari honi chahiye. Lekin ek dam sach hai, aap kabhi bhi ja ke usko sample le sakte hai, aur usko dekh sakte hai. Isko bhi to stop hona chahiye, ye 995 ki aad mein, Smuggling भी होती रहेगी, purity से भी खेल होते रहेगा, ये कब तक चलेगा? हम इसलिए कैसे इसको maintain कर पाएंगे ये समझ नहीं आ रहा है। ये 999 और आईएस तो फिर किस लिए है? हमने refineries को 999 से क्यों club किया है? Cash को दे देना बोल So we have a traditional system of accepting 995 for the past 30, 40, 50 years, starting from India government, India government mint period or gold control act. So a lot of 995 gold is still lying with the banks, the commodity exchanges, MCX, trading is still going on. Uh, so uh, there is there are historical reasons for continuing with the 995. But as I said, over a period of time, it may get phased out. Or the government may uh, what do you call it, introduce some measures to phase out uh, 995 from mandatory gold marking of bullion. It is, uh, it is basically a historical reason. Sir, the thing is that the refineries are not so expensive today. You have to say that the refineries are not so costly. They can not maintain them. आप इजीली बहुत छोटे-छोटे प्लांट में मिल रहे हैं दो लाख दो लाख से लेके पांच लाख तक मिल जाते हैं सर लेकिन खाली इसी के चलते हम इसको अपनी माने अपनी मेल प्रैक्टिसेस को कंटिन्यू रखें या वो गलत चलती आ रही है रिफाइनरी का सिस्टम पहले चांदी मिला करके रिफाइनरी का था नाइट्रिक एसिड के साथ रिफाइन होती थी वो प्रोसीजर अब समय आ गया है कि हमको बदलना चाहिए हम यदि इंटरनेशनली अपने आप को अपग्रेड नहीं करेंगे सर तो इसका फिर मतलब नहीं रहता कोई भी और सबसे बड़ी बात यह है सबको मालूम है सर आप अच्छी तरह जानते हैं मैं बार-बार यह क्वेश्चन क्यों रोज करता हूं एक सबसे बड़ी बात क्या जब हमको पेमेंट दिया जाता है मैं आर्टिजंस माने सेगमेंट को रिप्रेजेंट करता हूं जब हम वहां पर पेमेंट लेने के लिए जाते हैं अपने लगाए गए सोने को या हमको ज्वेलर से मेटल देते हैं तो 995 नहीं बल्कि 993 का भी देते हैं 995 का भी देते हैं ये भी एक मेल प्रैक्टिस चल रही है आखिर इसका कोई समाधान होगा क्या क्योंकि मैन्युफैक्चरर माने गोल्ड्स भी मैन्युफैक्चरर बोलो मैं आर्टिजन जिसको बोला जाता है यदि उसको आपका रॉ मटेरियल ही जब डिफेक्टिव है तब आपकी प्योरिटी का क्वेश्चन कब तक सरवाइव करेगा इसको कभी भी टेक्निकली भी थोड़ा सा सोचना जरूरी है सर वी अंडरस्टैंड योर रीजनिंग्स बट डेफिनेटली इट्स अ मैटर टू बी डिसाइडेड बाय द फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्री एंड द कंज्यूम the Consumer Affairs or Consumer Affairs Ministry and the Commerce Ministry as well. You may please take up the matter with these three ministries. Sir, it is well known to you that I have put all the subjects with all the ministries related. But uh, nothing is hard till the date. Now, let us wait for the mandatory to come. Because there are 50 gold refineries. They have a production capacity of around 2,500 tons per annum. So at least in the mandatory regime, at least 1,000 Tons of triple nine bullion is going to come into the market in whole market condition. So that is going to change. That is going to change the scenario in the coming three four years. That is that. Regarding another question of uh, LLPs, what I understand is that uh, NABL is stipulating that for getting an NABL license, you need to have uh, your uh, NIT le uh, legal status as LLP or private limited company. Uh, sir, you may please take up this matter with the BAS. 
uh, and then because BS will take it up with the further wheel, BS will further take it up with the NA wheel. Uh, this, uh, this is not a matter related to the technicalities of bullion hot market. It is a condition stipulated by NABL for uh, mechanism. So let us discuss it in a different forum. Thank you. And I would like to add one more point. The BAS license is for one year. Every year you need to renew your BAS license. You have to submit uh, your production details. How much quantities of bullion you have hallmarked with the BAS logo. And then you have to pay the royalty also. So after paying the royalty and after paying your renewal fees, the license is renewed. BAS may be having random market sampling from bars also. And the exchanges are also monitoring the quality. Thank you. Anyone have a question? So raise your hand. Yes, Sanjay ji. Uh, good afternoon uh, to everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, please. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. James Jones. Very good explanation given by you. As expected by your expertise in refining. My, uh, my question is, uh, what I heard is there is an exemption to the jewelers who are doing in-house refining from this uh, bullion hallmarking uh, uh, certification. So what I mean to say is then every jeweler will put up his own refining uh, capacity in his uh, place. And then the, where will the refiners have uh, the work for, to refine? Because of late we are seeing that most of the big jewelers are having their in-house refining capacity. So if that is exempted, where will the refining capacity be available for the uh, recognized refiners? And why exemption for them? Because there are no PCB norms and anybody can set up a refining center in their in-house facility. Uh, isn't that uh, a disparity in the uh, scheme itself? Sir, the modalities or the, the rules and regulations for the mandatory hallmark is still under preparation. There is an advisory committee formed by the Consumer Affairs Ministry, where there are representatives from all segments, micro refiners, BS licensed refiners, jewelry associations. So all these agencies are working on the SOP. And if you have any concerns, you may please take it up with the DDG hallmarking BS, because the draft guidelines are still under finalization. And BS will be open to suggestions and uh, particular proposals. Thank of you. Course, of course, one more thing I will just add, add regarding uh, pollution. By virtue of gold refineries using nitric acid and hydrochloric acid, these additives are coming under the red category of pollution control norms. So anybody doing gold refining using aqua regia or nitric acid or electrolytic method need to have a red category consent from the State Pollution Control Board. And these State Pollution Control Boards are having location, siting criteria that this refinery shall be minimum 25 meters, 50 meters, away from the nearby commercial establishment. It has to be in an industrial area. So these are the uh, varies from state to state. There are guidelines in place to for a red category consent. So you cannot say that uh, jewelers will have uh, their own refineries above their shop in a commercial area. Of course, there are norms and regulations for that. Thank you. Thank you. So anyone have a question? I just want to add one more point that presently seven carriages are permitted under BAS jewelry hallmarking scheme. Out of that, the one carat is 24 KS. KS is 99.5. So 99.5 purity uh, bullion bars can be hallmarked at Bureau of Indian Standards permitted, recognized hallmarking standards under 24 KS 995 category. It cannot be called a bullion bar. It will be called a gold artifact. So that mechanism for HUD is still open. So what I mean to say is that if 100 gram and depot are hallmarked or produced by BAS licensed gold refineries, smaller bullion bars of 995 can 
uh, always be permitted. We can, we can uh, place that suggestion. Can can be permitted to continue to be hallmarked and be as recognized to hallmark is under under HUAD category. That will be laser marking HUAD. The other one will be embossed uh, hallmarking by BS Apna their own product certification and their own uh, BS license in Walter families. So different categories are there even now. The industry can uh, make such recommendations to the the stakeholders can make such recommendations to the government to permit smaller bars to be hallmarked at uh, BS licensed uh, world of, uh, hallmark centers and the bigger bars at uh, refineries. Both categories can coexist. So the Anyone have a question? Please ask, raise your hand. Otherwise, we close the session. Hello. Yeah, Kiranji. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, Mujay Janata, I mean, like, uh, according to your expertise, like, is will there any be provision for you know, like a smaller area refinery? Because, uh, for tier two, tier three cities, like, it will be, be very difficult, even if you set up a license, like, uh, BIS licensed refinery, production capacity will be next to zero. So, accordingly, can you guide us, like, what, what should we do, like, uh, what can be done? Sir, I have already mentioned that BAS has not stipulated any financial criteria, minimum net worth or production capacity for getting BAS license. If you look at LBMA, there is a five-ton threshold limit. Only if you have five ton, you will get LBMA accreditation and minimum net worth and all that. Whereas for BAS license refineries, it can be five kilo or one kilo or financials, anything. Absolutely no restriction. So anybody can set up, depending on your production capabilities, can be done. Not an issue. I think I have answered your query. Hello. Uh, so what I just said is the, uh, I mean the the setup for even for five kilo, even for one kilo, the setup will be the same, right? Yeah, depending on, but you need to have a minimum set of equipments, uh, like uh, not just refining, you need to make a make a bar also because you need to make a uh, what you call a hallmark bar. There are certain yes. minimum sizes prescribed by the BS, so you need to have a bar making machine. And there's so many uh, laboratory. It is not just a refining equipment. You, it's a, it's a big, uh, it's a, it's a minimum uh, set of equipments. It is not just one refining equipment. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, anyone have a question? So, Jamesy, I think all the doubts have been clear. So, we end the session. So, thank you all the participants. And thank you, the James Jose. And we play one video. And after that, we can we close the session. What does your investment portfolio look like without gold? Incomplete. Why? Because as a gold owner, you have the power to make bold decisions. To balance risks and returns.
the power to buy and sell right at your fingertips because as a gold owner you can secure your investments with your strategic advantage gold without which your portfolio is incomplete power your portfolio with gold world gold council uh, sorry for being uh, communicating in, in uh, english i am equally comfortable in hindi sorry anybody can kisi ko hindi mein puch lo i can give the reply in hindi also not an issue please please open किसी का कोई सवाल है आप पूछ सकते हैं। सर किसी का कोई क्वेश्चन नहीं है तो वी क्लोज द सेशन ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू जम्स